recently I received a question from one of my patrons about headphone amplifiers. He was considering buying Shit Audio's Valhalla 2 as a tube amp. Now here's a variety of headphones consisting of Bear Dynamic and Sennheiser headphones as well as a couple of others and he was wondering whether buying a Valhalla 2 was a good idea or whether he should just get an Asgard 3. Well, it's an interesting choice that I see coming up occasionally that people often consider the Asgard 3, but then think, well, maybe what if I spent a bit more and got a tube amp? Would it actually be better? Now, the difficulty with this kind of question is there are actually three different kinds of tube amps, and some of them may be suited to the kind of headphones you have, and some may not. Now, the most common kind of tube amp is called the tube hybrid. It's actually a tube amp and a solid state amp in one. The tube portion of the amp is used for voltage gain, and then the solid state portion of the amp is used for current gain. And it also allows the amp to be used with a large variety of headphones, just as a solid state amp like the Asgard 3 can be. More or less, you can consider it an Asgard 3 with a tube stage in something like that kind of sense. Now, the other kind of tube amps that are out there are the first one can be considered transformer coupled. Essentially, it's like a hybrid, except you have the voltage gain stage with tubes, just as you do with a hybrid amp, but the output is not through a solid state section, but a set of transformers. And this allows the high voltage, high output impedance output of the tubes to be changed into a low output impedance and higher current output to allow the amp to work with a larger variety of headphones. The third kind of amp is what is called output transformer less, essentially the last kind of amp I mentioned but without the transformers. And that means that the tubes output directly to the headphones. Now the problem with this, and this is the same problem with the Valhalla 2, being an output transformer less amp, it means it's relatively cheap because the number of parts are far fewer and the whole design is less complicated than a hybrid or a transformer coupled amp. However, the problem is, as I said in my description, the output impedance is quite high, maybe 50 ohms. Now, why does that matter? Well, all headphones have an impedance. For example, these Sennheiser HD6XXs, also known as the HD650s, have an impedance of 300 ohms. That's how much the signal is impeded in ohms. Now, the for that, it doesn't matter if the output impedance of an amp is high, like 50 ohms or 100 ohms of some amps, because the, out, the impedance of the headphones is much higher, so it has no trouble driving them. In fact, the high, high output impedance allows the tubes to swing a lot of voltage, which works very well with high impedance headphones. Now, the problem is a lot of headphones these days are low impedance and often require a lot of current, such as these Hi-Fi Man Sundaras. So if you do have, say, a 32 or 40 ohm pair of planar headphones and the output impedance of the amp is, say, 50 ohms or 100 ohms, it means that the control of the driver is going to be very poor. And this was very noticeable, say, if I plug these Sundaras into the Valhalla in high gain mode, you can hear the basses all over the place. It's, it's distinctly distorted, unmistakably so. So they, the Valhalla 2 will not drive these kinds of headphones in high gain mode. Now, the interesting thing about the Valhalla 2, though, is it also has a low gain mode, allowing it to work with headphones such as these. So it does allow some flexibility in what it can do, but it's still not ideal. And so this is probably a good chance to get into what's the difference in actual sound. So what I did is I used both of these headphones with the Asgard 3 and the Valhalla 2, both in high and low gain mode, and I took some notes about my impressions with both pairs of headphones. Now to start with the Valhalla 2 and the high impedance HD6 XXs, similar to how my experience with Sennheiser's high impedance HD 800s were, it drove them very, very well. I mean, much better than say a $300 amp would suggest. It's definitely a distinct step up from the Asgard 3. Now it wasn't dramatically so much, but I was noticeably better drive of these high impedance headphones coming from the Valhalla 2. However, as I stated, it's kind of the opposite direction when I plugged the Hi-Fi Man Sundaras into both of these amps. Whereas, as like I said, with high gain mode, the bass was just out of control. It was not a good match at all. And in low gain mode, well, I could hit maximum volume without it getting really that loud. It just wasn't able to pr provide enough power to drive these headphones really well. In, th in that case, the Asgard 3 definitely worked better with the Hi-Fi Man Sundaras in driving the headphones. It had more volume, it had just had more power, everything was more spacious, and it was just a better performance overall. So while you could get away with using low impedance headphones with the Valhalla 2, it just did not work well at all. 
where it works really well is with high impedance headphones where you want an inexpensive amp to drive these high impedance headphones without spending a lot of money and you're not intending to use it with low impedance headphones such as a lot of modern headphones and a lot of modern planar headphones. Now with the Valhalla 2 itself, it has some good and bad points. One of those bad points is it runs very hot. It's biased, it's only a class A amp and it runs at 100% power 100% of the time. So it gets so hot in my room that I can barely touch it after it's been running for an hour. The other thing is, well, a lot of people buy amps to roll tubes. Now the Valhalla 2 comes with four tubes, two sets of Russian tubes at the back of these tall ones, and they are not interchangeable with anything at all because they're a completely unique design. However, the front tubes can be changed, and they are basically 6922 compatible tubes, which can be interchanged with a lot of different models, sometimes even with adapters. So you can change the flavor of the amp a little bit, and the stock tubes are basically decent, but to get a little bit of higher quality sound, you can go out and get a pair of tubes for them, which will probably sound a bit better. Now the thing about that is if you're buying an amp which you have to change both tubes at the same time is that you have to buy a matched pair because each individual tube will have a little bit of variance. The tube sellers will match up pairs using a tube tester to, so that you don't end up with like an amp with a channel imbalance or some other issue like that. So the problem with rolling tubes in tube amps which have two tubes is the matched pair issue. Now if you want an amp for example which you don't have to worry about buying matched pairs and you will power any headphones you want and you but you do have the option of rolling tubes there is shit audio's Lear 3 and of course it's very it's more expensive because it is basically as i said two amps in one it's a tube amp it's a solid state amp merged together as a hybrid it can be used with any kind of headphones from iems up to full-sized headphones it only has one tube to roll so that you don't have to worry about matched pairs but of course it's more expensive so that kind of gives you a, a series of options to choose about what kind of headphone amp you buy. If you are primarily focused on powering high impedance headphones and you want to save money, well then you can get away with the Valhalla 2, but to drive a larger variety of headphones and low impedance headphones, it's going to be an Asgard 3 or a Lear 3 ideally. So I hope that bit of advice will help people out there decide whether to buy a Valhalla 2 or not. If you do want my advice anytime, did you know that you can become a supporter and ask these kinds of questions and get direct answers anytime? You don't have to wait for these kinds of videos. It's thanks to the people whose names you see on screen that I'm able to make these videos. So to become a supporter, click on one of the links that's in the description too. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified when I have another video out. Anyway, thanks once again for watching and I'll hope to see you online.